We're discovering new things all the time, like fossils underground and exciting new animal species. It is very rare to find such well-preserved dinosaur fossils from that period. But cities underwater? Now that's on an entirely new level of cool. From a Japanese Atlantis from 2,000 years ago to an ancient resort city, here are 15 of the most amazing cities found underwater. Number 15. Cancun Underwater City The Mexican city of Cancun is well known for its many different scuba diving locations, but in recent years, the city has added yet another one. The Cancun Underwater City in 2009, construction began of Museo Subacuatio de Arte, the subaquatic museum of art. It's home to over 400 sculptures, which scuba divers can explore when diving off the coast of Cancun. With the concrete car now anchored in the right parking spot. The whole idea behind this astounding museum is to show a connection between the environment and art, and we think they've achieved just that. Artist and sculptor Jason DeCares Taylor is the mastermind behind this creation, and he has helped set up four installations spanning over 420 square meters of barren sea. Other artists then stepped in to add their own interpretation of art and nature. Since the installation of the Cancun Underwater City was created, over 750,000 people have had a chance to explore it, including the extremely ambitious Silent Evolution component, which chronicles human evolution. While these sculptures are not that old, they have already attracted a significant amount of reef life and are showing promising signs of coral growth. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Dwarka in India. There's a lot of mention in ancient Hindu texts of a large city known as Dwarka having been attacked with a flying machine. With the use of energy weapons, the city was brought to its knees and lay in ruins. In these same texts, the city supposedly had 900,000 royal palaces dripping in emeralds, crystal, and silver. Not to mention roads and boulevards, houses and temples, and marketplaces. These stories and legends around Dwarka have been around for such a long time that no one even questions their authenticity. While there may be no underwater or lost city in India just like that, the story did make archaeologists curious. Marine archaeologists managed to find several structures and artifacts around 70 feet below the sea's surface. They discovered sandstone walls, seaport remains, and a grid of streets. So far, they believe these structures date back to around 9,000 years ago. So while there may not be massive royal palaces of wealth showing signs of an alien attack, there is proof to suggest that Dwarka, or a version of it, really did exist. Number 13. Port Royal in Jamaica Port Royal in Jamaica was once described as the wickedest city in the West, probably primarily due to the many outlaws and pirates that called it home. But today, part of it sits underwater, while another part sits on land as a reminder of the rich history of the area. Much of the old city surrounding Port Royal ended up underwater as a result of an earthquake in 1692. This devastating quake swallowed at least two-thirds of the living space of the time. But that wasn't the end of their woes. In 1907, another terrible earthquake struck, followed by fires, hurricanes, and diseases. Port Royal hasn't been able to catch a break, but that has led to it becoming an archaeological gold mine. Tourists travel from far and wide to learn about the underwater city, and even capture a glimpse of the sunken pirate ship in the nearby Kingston Harbor. There are plans in the future to create a museum to showcase everything that's been discovered so far. For now though, you can pay a visit to Port Royal, soak up the atmosphere, and learn about what was once the wickedest city in the West. Or so they say. Number 12. Yanaguni Monument in Japan University of the Ryukyu's marine archaeologist Masaki Kimura is convinced an ancient city lies below the waters off Yanajunijima in Japan. 
Masaki has spent several years diving at the site to measure and map the formations at dozens of feet below the surface. From his research, he believes that the several submerged stone structures he has found are from a Japanese Atlantis, a city that sunk due to a devastating earthquake around 2,000 years before. One of the more impressive structures he has come across is a monolithic stepped pyramid that rises 82 feet. If it could come in the form of a book that cost $12.99. He dates the whole city at around 5,000 years old. Boston University professor of science and mathematics Robert Stotch pointed out that not all the structures that have been found are man-made, but believes many of them are. There are plenty of signs that point to that theory, such as quarry marks in some of the stones, etched carvings, and rocks sculptured with an animal likeness. None of the structures in this potential forgotten underwater city are recognized as valuable cultural property, so people are free to dive and explore it for themselves. Number 11. Lion City in China most underwater cities that we know of have come to be underwater through natural disasters such as earthquakes. But that's definitely not the case when it comes to Lion City in China, a city that was built during the Eastern Han Dynasty in 25 to 200 AD. This beautiful city used to be the center of economics and politics in Zhejiang's eastern province. However, after the Chinese government saw a need for a hydroelectric power station in 1959, its journey underwater began. The government arranged for a man-made lake to be built, which then submerged the Lion City, known as Xi Cheng, under 131 feet of water. That lake is now known as Qiandao Lake, and it covers 221 square miles with more than 1,000 large islands and a few thousand small ones. But what became of the city? Well, you might expect that it would rot away to nothing, but it didn't, at least not yet. Without the impact of rain, wind, and sunshine, it has essentially become a time capsule. Temples, paved roads, homes, memorial arches, and even wooden staircases have remained intact. The underwater city has now become a tourist attraction, with divers being able to explore it and view the pristine city from over half a century ago. Number 10. Pavlo Petri in Greece while exploring between Beach Punta in southern Laconia and the island Elephonisos in 1904, geologist Fokia Negri reported that he had found an ancient city lying on the seabed. Then, in 1967, University of Southampton oceanographer Dr. Nicholas Fleming visited the underwater city and discovered an ancient submerged city at around 13 feet deep. The following year, Dr. Fleming returned with University of Cambridge archaeologists to map and date that city. What they found was astounding. The amazing underwater city had buildings, streets, and even town squares. They believed that they date back to the Mycenaean period of 1680 to 1180 BC. Since then, a lot of research has been carried out to learn more about this underwater city that has been named Pavlo Petri. In 2007, a research program was created to investigate it, which aimed to answer the questions on the dating of it and the character. Today, the remains of it are visible from depths of 13 feet, and they lie around a four-hour drive from Athens, or around two and a half hours from the Kalamata International Airport. Number 9. Via Epiquen in Argentina Imagine how you would feel if your home was submerged underwater for a quarter of a century, then suddenly reappeared for you to visit. It would surely be bittersweet, even if there weren't much left to see. That was the reality for many people who used to live in the tourist village established along Lago Epiquen's shores. This salt lake, around 372 miles southwest of Buenos Aires in Argentina, used to be bordered by the resort town of more than 5,000 people known as Villa Epiquen. Villa Epiquen was just like any average small town. It was established in 1920 and had many thriving businesses and a railroad station that allowed people to live a normal, comfortable life. But that all changed in the 1970s. A strange, long-term weather event saw a lot more rainfall in the surrounding hills than the area had ever seen before. Lago Epiquen started to swell and, by 1985, the salt water broke through the earthen dam and flooded the village. 
By 1993, the village lay 33 feet underwater. But as the wet weather reversed, the water started to recede around 2009. While the town lies in ruins barely recognizable, many people return to see if they can find where they once lived. One man even chose to move back. Number 8. Heraklion in Egypt For hundreds of years, people scoffed at the idea that the city of Heraklion in Egypt even existed. Sure, the rumor was that Paris and Helen of Troy had visited it and that many ancient historians had mentioned it, but where is it? If it's not around, then it must be a myth, surely. It was a legend or myth no more. For in 2000, French archaeologist Frank Gaudio found it after having been lost for 1,200 years. So far, what we know is that the city, also referred to as Thonis, was founded in the 12th century BC. We also know that it disappeared deep below the ocean's surface around 1,200 years ago. Possible theories are that an earthquake was to blame. But now that it's been found, researchers and archaeologists struck the jackpot. A mere few miles off the coast of Alexandria, plenty of treasures are being found that relate to the city. Among them are statues, ships, bronze statues, gold coins, and huge slabs of stone with ancient Egyptian and Greek inscriptions. Gold coins, bronze, and stone, and other treasures. There's even a Greco-Egyptian statue that is thought to represent Cleopatra II as the goddess Isis. So whenever you hear of a lost city being a myth, there's every reason to believe it might not be. We just haven't found it yet. Number 7. Baia in Italy Did you know that Italy used to have an ancient city comparable to Las Vegas? Baia was a Roman city that was well known as a prominent resort city for hundreds of years. It was frequently visited by the Roman elite and rich and powerful. Even Nero, Cicero, and Caesar were among many influential figures to both visit and have vacation villas there. So it was obviously all the rage. The city was positioned over natural volcanic vents, which ended up being both its attraction and its downfall. These vents were utilized as medicinal hot springs, and the Romans realized quite early on that they were easy to build spas over. Around the 8th century, the fun and games came to a screeching halt. The Muslim army sacked the city, and the remnants of the city were abandoned by 1500. That may have been a blessing in disguise, though, as those volcanic vents that lured in visitors were responsible for rising water levels. Today, it's an underwater archaeological park that visitors can explore while snorkeling, scuba diving, and swimming. You can even take a trip on a glass-bottomed boat to check out the crumbling remains. Number 6. Atlit Yam in Israel Archaeologists discovered more than they possibly thought they would when they chanced upon a new underwater city. The underwater city of Atlit Yam in Israel dated back to around 8,000 years ago and spanned about 47,000 square yards. Rather than feature old statues and temples like many lost cities though, this one appeared to be an agro-pastoral marine substance system. It was found on the Levantine coast and was thought to have been home to a society who survived on fishing, hunting, livestock farming, and crop cultivation. After carrying out surveys of the site, archaeologists discovered stone walls, water wells, houses, and even a megalithic monument. However, they also found human remains. 65 human skeletons were found, including that of a woman and child. What was particularly interesting about these two, though, was that they were thought to have been suffering from tuberculosis. Therefore, archaeologists not only discovered a new underwater city, but potentially the earliest known cases of the disease. Scientists also believe that Atlit Yam was abandoned due to a tsunami hitting the region, possibly caused by a volcanic eruption. Believe it or not, the massive piles of fish found there prove that theory. Number 5. Kalyazin Bell Tower in Russia over the waters of the Uglich Reservoir opposite Kalyazin on the Volga River, you might see something quite large protruding out of the water. 
No, it's not your eyes playing tricks on you. It really is a large and strikingly beautiful structure sitting randomly in water in Tverskaya Oblast, northwestern Russia. But there's a good reason why the structure, the Kalyazin Bell Tower, is there and nothing else is. The tower was built between 1796 and 1800 to form part of the monastery of St. Nicholas. At the time, the area already had a Pentecupular Catholicon, which is a church, dating back to 1694. It was built with 12 bells, and some weighed as much as 37,000 pounds. In 1939, Joseph Stalin requested the construction of the Uglich Dam, which would form the Uglich Reservoir. As a result, several old parts of Kalyazin, including medieval structures, ended up being submerged in water. The Troitsky Makaryev and St. Nicholas monasteries were among them. Even though the Catholicon was dismantled, the bell tower was left alone. Now, it rises about 244 feet above the water and has become a tourist attraction. There's even a small pier for boats. Number 4. Sunken City of Cuba The sunken city of Cuba is certainly up for debate. Some people say it's a sunken city, while others believe they are just unique products of nature. Whichever side of the fence you're on, there's no denying what lies in the Pinar del Rio province of Cuba is a little bit absurd. Marine engineer Pauline Solitsky and her husband Paul Weinswig were on a survey mission in 2001 with the Cuban government when they discovered some strange sonar images. They noted a series of organized stone structures about 2,132 feet below the ocean surface against a barren desert of the ocean floor. They appeared to be symmetrical, and it was immediately thought that they might be signs of an underwater city. Governments, national museums, and even National Geographic all vowed to investigate, and then most people heard nothing more about it. What became of this supposed underwater city? Well, researchers actually went back to the site and saw large blocks of stone that looked like hewn granite. Some of them looked stacked on top of each other, but others were on their own. Because of the depth they were at, it would have taken around 50,000 years for them to sink. The architectural abilities were not advanced back then, so it was decided the time frames didn't align for this to be anything other than nature playing a joke on us. Number 3. Pre-Incan Ruins in Lake Titicaca in the year 2000, archaeologists were diving in Lake Titicaca between Peru and Bolivia in the Andes when they stumbled upon what they believed was a massive ancient temple. They had made more than 200 dives in the lake before they came across a holy temple, a pre-Incan road, a containing wall, and a terrace for crops. They even managed to find ceramic artifacts on the lake floor. There have always been rumors about a lost underwater city in Titicaca, but diving at altitude had always made it tricky to verify. The lake is 12,467 feet above sea level, making it the highest navigable lake in the world. Still, what they managed to find back in 2000 was proof enough that there was some kind of civilization dating back around 1,500 years. It wasn't thought to belong to the Incas, but it leans more towards the Tiahuanaco people who lived on the lake shore before joining the Incan Empire. Since 2000, several new discoveries have been made. There are now 24 discovered archaeological sites under the lake, and plans are underway to preserve both the land and underwater structures in a museum. Number 2. The Underwater Sculpture Park in Malinir Bay if you happen to be visiting the west coast of Granada, then it's worth paying a visit to the world's first underwater sculpture park in Malinir Bay. The park was constructed to regenerate the area after storm damage. It would also have the added bonus of providing a home for coral and algae. Whether you go snorkeling or scuba diving, you're going to experience something truly remarkable. There are several concrete and steel structures bolted to the sea floor to lure divers in for a closer look. Jason DeCares Taylor, an artist, photographer, environmentalist, and sculptor from Britain, is responsible for the creation of the majority of the sculptures. There are 65 in total, with some beautiful pieces such as The Lost Correspondent, The Vicissitudes, and Christ of the Deep. The park has been open since 2006, and so far, the sculptures are holding up well. Some of the sculptures aren't in the best condition, but that doesn't detract from the experience. What's more, the entry fees to visit are used to help marine management initiatives, so it's a win-win. Number 1. 
The Lost Villages in Canada Floods, tsunamis, and earthquakes ravage many towns and villages. Sometimes the odd volcanic eruption as well. But the ten communities consisting of nine villages in a populated island in Ontario, Canada, were ruined in an altogether different way. These villages, in former Cornwall and Osnabrück, were submerged to make way for the St. Lawrence Seaway in 1958 and the Moses Saunders Power Dam construction in 1954. Fortunately, they didn't just flood the villages with no warning. It was a monumental planning exercise that involved moving families and businesses to nearby communities and buying out the landowners. Alongside those villages, the town of Iroquois was moved nearly a mile north, and its previous location was flooded as well. Morrisburg was partially flooded but moved to higher ground. Even a portion of Highway 2 had to be rebuilt along the Canadian National Railway. In total, 530 buildings were moved, plenty more demolished, and around 6,500 people had to uproot their lives and go somewhere else. Not everyone was happy about it either, as several people believe the market value of their home had suffered due to the plans, so they didn't receive the payout that they thought they were owed. The world we know today is nothing like thousands of years ago, and that's proven by the sheer number of structures and cities we're finding underwater. Do you live near any of these? Can you think of any others? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!